Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you? Um, I've had worse, obviously. Um, so currently, I'm in a country that's been found under attack, and as a you're you're in Israel. I am in Israel. Yes. Blessings, much love and light to you and everyone there. Thank you. Um, and first, just dealing with the anxiety, with the concrete anxieties, um, struggle of itself. Um, I don't think I've ever encountered in such, in such a um, profound and real um, fear for my life, for my uh, beloved one's lives. Um, and I have a few different ways of uh, reacting or I, I feel drawn into supporting this collective and being here, yet in the same time, uh, fleeing is also something that's um, on my mind, yet not. Um, I don't know, I'm really confused and not knowing. Yeah, it's like I'm being constantly drawn into staying here, even though it seems uh, to be very far from what I tr truly desire in my reality, but. I feel uh, a sense of responsibility for this collective that generates those uh, atrocities that we are facing now. And I don't know. I don't know what to do. Thank you for sharing, first of all. Would you like uh, some of my thoughts on that? Would love me. How long have you been in NLS, by the way? Um, five, six months, maybe less. Cool. What would you say is your truest desire in this whole quagmire? chaotic situation. It's hard to say, honestly. Um, um, but if you dig really deep, if you tune in. What is your ultimate your ultimate desire here? Um, or your highest inspiration? Um, I would like to support this collective in generating a different reality. Mm -hmm. Yet, I don't know if it's my job to take responsibility over the whole collective. Beautiful. This reality. Beautiful. So the, as I see it, the main cause of your confusion or conflict or struggle with this and I understand the actual situation is tough, but the internal part that is confusing or causing some entropy within you, meaning some breaking down of alignment, some breaking down of what could otherwise be an empowering opportunity for service and why that is 
um, why that is diminished or gets distracted is primarily because of this limiting idea that you have, I think, of feeling responsible for this collective. So ironically or paradoxically, you, I do believe you are there to be of service. Whether or not that's in a physical sense, I don't know. That's up to you to decide. But just your presence there and your incarnation in that collective, or at least you're, I don't know if you were born in that collective. Were you? Okay. The way that I sense or read this is sort of the classic example of a wanderer choosing exactly where to incarnate to bring higher vibrations, a higher message of love and reconciliation and unity and so forth. So basically to insert yourself in a collective that needs light and love in this transition phase on planet Earth, as the consciousness of the collective is trying to figure out who it is, where it wants to go. And a lot of us are shifting into greater love and light and understanding. And some of us are just too confused to understand what's going on. And, and there's you know layers in between that. I sense that you chose to be there for a reason, for sure. Again, doesn't mean that you have to stay there physically all the time. Um, you, you have embodied that collective in the form of your own body and the form of your own mind and your own conditioning. So you have quite literally taken on a chunk, a portion of that particular collective, also of the humanity collective at large, but specifically for you also of the collective that you're talking about. So I'm saying that's already an act of service because you're taking on essentially a piece of matter that is born out of the collective manifestation that you're there to serve. And simply by taking on this incarnation and this mind and this social environment and the family that you were raised in and the people around you, the neighborhoods, the public, all that, by taking that on in your consciousness, from a higher intention to bring more light into that, that meeting point of that intention of your higher self's intention or that light, that love for service, when that's meeting with, when that's making contact with the material substances and the psychic substances of your incarnation in that collective, that meeting, that blending is already an act of bringing in higher light and love into that collective. So first of all, I'd like you to understand that simply by experiencing what you are experiencing right now, and simply by having taken on this form, you are unequivocally being of service, no matter what you do or don't do, no matter what you take responsibility for or don't take responsibility for, whether you physically stay or quote unquote flee, or maybe follow guidance when it's time to go. Sometimes that's just common sense. Um, then or stay and, and help. I really don't propose to know what you should choose physically, but I do want to give you this sense of you are being of service. You don't have to take on responsibility as a heavy burden because you are not responsible for that collective, but you do have opportunity to shine your light. You do have opportunity to elevate those frequencies. And it may not seem like it amounts to much. It may not seem like you have a lot of power, but you do. It may not seem like your influence reaches far, but it does. And this is something people don't realize. They don't see this very often, very clearly. You kind of have to be psychic for this or clairvoyant or highly trained. But rest assured that your influence is significant and it is making a difference just by you being who you chose to be, by you blending your soul energies with this physical and psychic matter of this collective. So you're already being of service. I just want you to feel that first as a foundation of peace, freedom, and feeling good about yourself and being there. That's the most important thing to relax into, to realign to, because then your service will be empowered. You will not confuse yourself with what's going on around you. You will not confuse yourself with this false idea that you are responsible or that you should take on responsibility or that you should be responsible for saving anyone in sort of a physical way or, or even a psychic way. Um, so you're not responsible for any of the people in your collective. Maybe in a way you could say you're responsible for your family or, you know, that's, 
the governance as far as your physicality goes. You have a responsibility, a commitment, a desire to take care of, to protect, to guide those that are physically subscribed to you, if you will, that are part of your family, your immediate environment, uh, maybe your neighbors, your friends, and so forth. But you don't really have any responsibility or honorable requirement or commitment towards the collective. You don't have to take on a responsibility. And when you, when you have that idea, it comes from guilt, it comes from lack, it comes from not seeing the far-reaching influence that you already have simply by having made the choice to incarnate where and how you did, and by being there and by caring about the people and by sending your love and light. By not seeing that, the power of that, by not feeling fulfilled through the power of that, you are more likely to take on limiting ideas and sort of external societal ideas about taking responsibility for or feeling responsible for. And then you feel maybe guilty when you feel guided in a different direction physically. So try to free yourself from the sense of responsibility, knowing that you are in full honor and you are fully of service by being, simply by being. And simply by the act of incarnating, that's one of the greatest acts of service and courage. Nothing beyond that point is ever ex really expected of us. We take on these extra burdens and we weigh ourselves down by these conflated societal ideas, which actually kind of diminishes our service. So I do want you to feel as powerful, as clear, as aligned, as synchronous as you possibly can, so that you can receive without any guilt, without any artificial pressure in a relaxed state of believing in yourself and seeing the value that you are offering and feeling honorable in that, in that state, you will receive the highest guidance as to how to navigate your current circumstances and how to be of assistance to this collective. And that does not necessarily require that you're physically there. It could, again, that is entirely up to you, but you're the extent of your service is not limited to where you are physically or what you do physically. And if it could be wisdom to move out of a high target area, for instance, if that enables you to be more at peace and to feel like you have taken care of your family and you've taken care of your initial duties and responsibilities, and you're in a place now to serve, to contribute, whether that's online or through your meditations or through calling certain people or whatever it might be, however you might be inspired to serve, what's happening. That could be a way as well. Or maybe you are actually inspired to stay where you're at. Maybe that's actually guidance. And for some reason, that is just making a bigger impact. That's making a bigger difference. Very possible as well. So again, I'm not going to tell you what to do because I don't know, quite frankly, that's entirely up to you. But I do know that you're being of service and that there's no reason for you to feel diminished in your service or diminished in your honor, or to feel guilty or limited in what you're offering already by simply being. Does this make sense? Yeah, it does a lot. Um, and maybe I could ask for how, in, in such, a, such a stressful situation, would you advise to maintain high frequency um, that could first not align or Mm, sync with less lesser thoughts and also lesser vibrations which are very current yeah, in this realm of reality um, and also maintaining that service by just being with you say well you want to know yes i understand you want to know uh, what I think is the most powerful way to do that? And this is going to sound paradoxical, but it is to see the perfection of everything that's happening through and through. Which doesn't mean that you won't oppose certain things or that you won't change certain things or that you won't take action about certain things. But for you internally, within your own inner seeing, to, con to contact a higher level of seeing that understands the perfection of everything that's happening right now. Because if you can align yourself to that perspective, 
you will then be guided by that perspective of perfection in the most skillful and intelligent possible ways with as least as possible personal debris in between clouding the vision. But if you're coming from a state of this is all wrong and this is all bad and this is all terrible, then that's what you are aligning yourself to. And then that's all that you can contribute. So it is ironic or paradoxical because you're in a situation that's obviously not preferred. It's not ideal. It is the manifestation of ignorance. It's the manifestation of delusion. It's the manifestation of unresolved emotions and um, mental delusions. So yes, it's a manifestation of everything that you could say is quote unquote wrong with our collective. However, if you can see that it is perfect, that it is coming to the service, because what's more detrimental than a manifestation of it is the continuous underlying presence of this ignorance. And for the majority of people to wake up, we generally need to see our unconsciousness manifested first. And so this is happening at a collective scale right now, not just in Israel, but it is speeding up all around the world. And Israel is a very tangible momentary example of this right now, but it's not unique to those people. It's not unique to that region. And it is part and parcel of a collective sort of volcanic eruption that's happening. The magma, the lava was already building for a long time. And as Jesus said, whatever is hidden shall become manifest. In other words, nothing that is, even if it's hidden and secret and private and subtle, it will be made manifest. It will come to the service. So in a way, from that perspective, it is perfect that it is happening, that it is occurring, that it is a demonstration of what's secretly lurking in the background. So now people have a wake up call. They have more ability to change, to transform, to choose different realities. So the manifestation is at least perfect for giving people a clearer opportunity, a more tangible opportunity to choose different realities going forward. So it's serving a great purpose in the bigger scheme, in the bigger picture of things. But if you're too zoomed in on the atrocities in the moment, which I understand it's easy to do, but then that's what you are aligning to. And so ironically, to be of assistance to the atrocities, you need to see them as perfect, which does not mean you won't take action. This is what people fear. And this is why it's a paradox. So I'm not telling you to not care. I'm telling you to see the perfection behind it, to see through the immediate effects of it, or the manifestation of it, so that you can be plugged in to a higher intelligence, a clearer seeing, and then you can be of service. So I'm telling you, yes, be of service in all the ways you feel inspired to, but make sure you're coming from a perspective of perfection to the best of your ability, because that will aid you in your service. Coming from a perspective of this is terrible, which is easy to do if you're observing the circumstances only from the physical mind. It's easy to interpret it as only terrible. You can't be of service just as much as you would, nearly as much as you would, were you able to see and tap in to the greater overarching long-term perfection of this demonstration of our ignorance. If you can align to that, and if you can align to the divinity within it, the purposefulness, behind it, the necessity of this happening, then you can be aligned to a higher intelligence and you can be better of service while maintaining your own sanity and clarity of direction and not taking on any guilt that does not belong to you, not take on any responsibility that weighs you down because why would you? That's not of service. That's just you getting swamped by the swamp, getting sucked up in the quicksand that you're trying to be of assistance to. You can't help someone drowning in quicksand by jumping in. You need to stay on the shores of stability, of clarity, of perfection, so that you can reach out with your hand or some tool or some means so that they can crawl out of the quicksand. But diving in after them passionately, out of a sense of responsibility or love or honor, but if it's misplaced, if it doesn't come from a bigger picture, then you're just drowning with them, and that's not being of service. So you got to protect yourself psychically, first of all, 
and maybe physically too. I don't know. Up to you. So that you can continue to be of service from a place of sanity and clarity and trust in the bigger picture of things. And then you can help. Then you can reach out a hand. That would be my suggestion. Bless you for being there. And thank you for radiating the mission, really, in that part of the world and in these current circumstances. My thoughts will go out to you. My blessings will go out to you and all the people there and everyone else in NLS who is related to that area specifically. Thank you for choosing that. And I really appreciate it from a higher level as well. Thank you. All right, my friends, I think I'm intruding upon your Keda time. I love you all very much. I wish you all the best. We are all one spirit. And you are a powerful creator. Remember the tools, apply the tools, prioritize the tools. The world is breaking apart. It's been in a long lasting polyamorous relationship of the most confused kind. And it's breaking up into mutually beneficial relationship streams or parallel realities. And in this crazy epoch of earth, this opus of interesting proportions and dynamics, we can be best of service by staying really, really pure and true with who we are, why we are here, prioritizing the service to other sense of mission and calling, streamlining ourselves letting go of the temptations of the lower self with love, no suppression needed, just clarity, powerful declaration. I am powerful. I am free. I can be of service to believe in that, to believe in yourself and to then go forth with that energy, with that attitude and to join psychic hands, if you will, with this community and all communities like this around the world who have had the privilege and the courage to awaken themselves to this level or higher and are able to be of service deliberately. Stand your ground. Stand your ground. Stand your ground. A faith. Much love. Bye-bye. Dear brothers and sisters, our love and light goes out to all those affected by the recent outbreaks of war and other social political idiocies, natural disasters and any such atrocities and what we typically call disasters and atrocities. And in this particular case, I want to thank Itai for allowing us to post this segment of our most recent No Limit Society session, which took place a couple of days ago. And when it became clear that it felt relevant to post this segment from that session, he agreed for us to post this. So that is great. Thank you, Itai. And I want to clarify a little bit a more general concept here, which is that beyond just the context of the clip that you just saw, we make this distinction between physical action and support and spiritual action and support. Uh, they are connected. They are absolutely interrelated. And so I want to be clear that what we are suggesting here, or specifically what I'm suggesting here in this clip, is not for no physical action to be taken. I think it's fantastic that we can do things like gather donations, send over financial support to those affected by such events, um, offer housing, maybe in some contexts or cases even offering military service, um, where relevant. And so any of these cases where we're extending physical help should not be rejected, should not be denied. However, for most of you listening here, I presume that you don't feel a physical call to go travel your physical body to a physical location where a war is breaking out to help and assist. Maybe the occasional person does feel that calling. And then by all means, please act on that. But for most of you, I think the relevance you feel, the calling that you feel is of a psychic nature. It is of a quote unquote spiritual nature. It is how can we be of service 
First of all, within our own attitude, within our own consciousness, how can we understand these types of events? How can we understand that they are reflections or manifestations of long-held beliefs and long-suppressed ideologies or strongly believed in concepts that conflict with other concepts and all coming down in the end to a base ignorance as to the true nature of reality, the true nature of what we are, of what you are, what I am. This unified true source, this one source of all things. And we have lost sight of that. We've lost our ability to connect to that. And so the main importance here and what's relevant for everyone, regardless of being physically able to or willing to be of assistance in situations like the Israel-Gaza conflict right now, and there's many other such examples happening all around the world, um, especially in recent times and probably going forward. So how do we act in service? How can we align ourselves to be of service? And often people think that it lacks power or it lacks tangibility or it lacks reality to pray for people or to send love and light in our own consciousness, within our own quote-unquote imagination, to gather our will, to harness our psychic strength and to send out an intention that is loving, that is aligning, that is of support, that is not just pity and sympathy, but that comes from a deeper compassion from a holistic seeing of the perfection of all things and still acknowledging the negative nature of such events and the painful nature of such events and that people are seeking for support, they are seeking for clarity, they are seeking for uh, nurturement and so on. So for us to be able to gather our will and to send out an intention of love, to send out a prayer, if you will, to send light to those areas affected with the intent of perfection, sending over perfection with a sense of holistic spiritual insight and sending that in our minds, in our intention, in our consciousness to those who are affected by such situations. And this we can all do regardless of our location. And I encourage us to do so. And we should not underestimate the power of this as has been, dare I say, proven by uh, a lot of scientific experiments uh, done around the world pertaining to uh, testing out some of the quantum field theories and those kinds of things. And many books have been published on this matter. So although it's not yet mainstream popular belief, I should say that nevertheless, it is proven um, and it is fact that our thoughts do influence reality, that our intentions and attitudes and the intention with which we send over a particular thought form or emotion, if you will, does indeed affect what you perceive as a physical reality. It therefore has a tangible effect. And so I encourage all of us to send love and light frequently to all of the world. And to make that most powerful, again, the paradox here is that we need to be connected to an insight into the perfection of all things. We need to see beyond the atrocities. We need to see beyond the dualities. We need to see into a meta view, a holistic meta view of how all of this is coming to the surface and is being in process of reconciliating itself and coming from a state where we feel that our wish for a happy planetary civilization that lives in harmony, clarity and honesty with each other, with itself, is already accomplished. We must, in a sense, do our best to come from that state of realization, that state of fulfilled perfection. And if with that state of joy, love and bliss, paradoxically, we're sending that love and light towards people who are currently not in such states, probably, and they need a little bit more of that love and light, this is the most powerful way by far to affect the field, to affect collective events. We cannot do it only out of sympathy with sort of a negative and horrible or fearful attitude. That's not the same as sending love and light, and therefore it is not of support. So again, we got to take sort of our conventional ideas about, oh, we have to suffer in order to care out of the equation and see the truth and the facts as they actually are, which is that if I'm in a good feeling state, if I'm in a connected state, connected to source, connected to a vision of unity, of wholeness, of liberation, of resolution, then I am in touch with a frequency that through my intention, through my imagination and my consciousness, I can direct into the quote-unquote quantum field which entangles and connects all things. 
And that can then have an actual powerful effect upon who knows whom. But any of the people affected in that area, it could affect the mind or the decision of some political leader and favor it in the direction of a positive choice that leads to resolution. It is like the butterfly effect. And we can't predict how these things will unfold, but we can ensure that we're sending a harmonious vibration, a coherent frequency of love, light, and perfection with the intention of love and compassion, not sympathy and lack. we got to come from an abundant state. So I just want everyone to understand this concept, and this is just how it works. It doesn't mean that you don't care. Being happy, noticing the perfection of things, the underlying perfection of things, and coming from a state, a wish-fulfilled state, a state of feeling the resolution and unity that's possible, and then sending that frequency over using your intent is the most powerful way to actually affect the field. Whereas on the other hand, if you're just... If you're just seeing the unfairness of it, if you're just seeing the pain and the horrors and the injustice of it, and you're coming from a state where you are judging that and you are discontent with that, then you don't have anything positive to share with anyone to send over. So yes, acknowledge the atrocities, acknowledge the negativity, but use that to then inspire you to connect to a bigger view, a higher perspective. And then do not underestimate the power of your intention. Again, it has been proven over and over again. Our intentions affect our reality absolutely for a fact. No matter how many people disagree with this fact, it is still going to be a fact and it's a provable fact. And so not everyone's going to go rush over. Not everyone's going to go start a financial fund for these people. But everyone here listening is able to send love and light to events like this and increase their own holistic understanding, their own balanced view of the place of such events in the greater picture in the timeline of earth and tune in to the resolution where this is all headed even though it seems to be getting worse it is just the darkness before the dawn if you will it is before the sun rises it seems to be the darkest but if we can already connect to the dawn if we can already connect to that unity to that love to that light to that bliss to that resolution to that sense of underlying overarching meta perfection we now have the resources, the fuel, psychically speaking, to send over a true prayer that is of true energetic support in some way, shape, or form, in many ways, shapes, and forms that you cannot linearly predict with your physical mind. So trust in your heart, trust in the bliss, trust in the love, trust in the joy that you can tune into and then send it over to those that are affected by this situation. Send it over to those areas of the planet just using your intention and your imagination. And I promise you, your intention will land. The frequency where you are coming from when you're doing this prayer, when you're sending the love and the light, if you're coming from a holistic view, this energy will have an impact. It will make a big difference. Thank you for listening. My love goes out to all of you and all who are affected. And um, until next time, much love.